just because you know he'd, he'd want to see this so badly, and he'd want to talk about it. His own words can do better than any of mine. Here now a tribute to our friend Tim Russert. I thought I would grow up in Buffalo, and if I got real lucky, I'd have a chance to go to college, maybe even law school, and then be a good lawyer here or a good teacher here. And that would be the extent of, of, of fulfilling my dream. From the humblest of beginnings, he rose to one of the most powerful positions in journalism, always asking the questions the country wanted to ask and getting the answers the country deserved to know. You know, you can be heard. You can reach out beyond the boundaries of South Buffalo. When I became moderator of Meet the Press, the first phone call I made was to Lawrence Spivak. And I said, Larry, what's the mission of this program, Meet the Press? He said, it's simple. Each and every Sunday, you have to learn as much as you can about your guest and his or her views and positions on issues and then take the other side. If I told you it was 25% of your state live below the poverty line, would you believe me? I could believe you, yes. Are these the kinds of things a governor should know? You have said that part of your $40 now, billion well, dollar deficit I have also told your program is $180 today. billion. Dollars. Yes, may I finish? May I finish? It was a simple question. Would you be willing to retract or apologize for some of the things you said? If I can defend every word that I speak, and every word that I speak is truth, then I have nothing to apologize for. People were sent to the convention center. There was no water, no food, no beds, no authorities there. There was no planning. The issue that seems to be being used against you, Scott McCone, is hypocrisy that you said one thing at the podium and wrote another in the book. Whether it was during election night, presidential debates, face-to-face -face interviews, Tim was always at the center of the action. But above all, every president and anyone who wanted to be president eventually had to face questions from Tim. Can you assure the Democrats that there is nothing in your background that might emerge which would doom your candidacy and the Democratic Party? What happens if Ross Perot runs as an independent? What does it do to your chances? Doesn't help. Do you believe that life begins at conception? No. I believe there's a difference. George W. Bush is the nominee of the Republican Party. If that's mm -hmm. the case, you will support him. Yes. If he came to you and said, John, mm -hmm. I need you to be my running mate. No. Would you agree to release all your military I have. records? I've, I've shown them they're available to you to come and look at. Why are people in your own party skeptical about your knowledge and experience to be president? Well, look, I, I have not been on the national scene as long as some of the other candidates in this race. What's the biggest public adversity a person has ever faced. What's yours? Well, I think we all know that. We lived through it, didn't we? I haven't had so much fun since my last interrogation. <laughs> I remember election night in 2000 so well. And I remember talking to Tim before the night began about how we were going to be able to explain it. If you just stayed with these simple boards, <laughs> you wouldn't have those problems. <laughs> those high flute computers, Tom. This is the answer. He did not want that primary season to end. He loved every minute of it. This is a very close primary race with a lot more twists and turns to play out. Brian, there was no one quite like Tim at your side when you were doing a debate, a special coverage. Well, brother, what are your feelings on this state? We like to say three times whenever we say it on television. But understand where you are, Brian. Go Owls. Oh, yeah. well, he's good. He's really good. I can't imagine life or journalism or politics in America without him. He made us proud, Tim did. He was objective and tough and sometimes funny. Tim was the best of the best. Uh, he was the best of our profession. There was a passion that was present in him at nearly every moment of every day. He was a really a better guy than even you think he was. Tim always found the time to, to let you know that he was there. What a remarkable gift to be able to share that kind of intensity with someone. And Tim, Tim shared it with everyone. I don't know of anybody that has made people appreciate their fathers and their relationships with their sons than Tim. Tim was the consummate son. He was so devoted to his dad, Big Russ. And he was the consummate father, so devoted to Luke and so proud of him.
I want you to know how often Tim talked about you. There's not a day that goes by that I did not know my father loved me. I interview politicians for a living, and people can get jaded and cynical about the political process, and I must admit I have my moments. But all that is trumped by what a country.